Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today we are going to be learning about improved Meyer lemon trees. We're going to learn just information about it, how to plant it up, and how to hand pollinate. Okay, so if you followed my Costco video, I purchased this tree for about $30 at um, Costco maybe a week ago. Since then, I did go buy homegrown um, plants and they had the same brand and the same variety for twice the amount. So I feel really good about what I got, the, um, the price that I got this for. Very excited about it. Since then, it has started blooming like crazy. I've had it inside. We have got to get this guy potted up. <laughs> and outside so that um, we can start perhaps making some lemons. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of work, uh, research about improved Meyer lemons. So improved Meyer lemons is a new variety based off the original Meyer lemon variety. The original Meyer lemon variety had a lot of issues with disease and pests. This new variety is disease and pest resistant. It is a cross between lemons and mandarin oranges, and it's known for a really thin skin and very juicy fruit. Now it is self-pollinating, meaning each of the flowers has the pollen that it needs and the stamen that it needs, has all the female and male parts to create fruit, which is really cool. So you can just buy one tree and be good. You don't need like a male tree a female tree. It can also bear fruit within two years and it can bear fruit inside and outside, which is very, very cool. Everything we're going to be doing today is going to be geared towards having this outside. So I wanted to make sure that I let y'all know that. Now, typically these uh, trees are going to give you a really big, heavy hard harvest in the winter, which is kind of cool that that's when the fruit is available. Um, but that's when you're harvesting the fruit because that's the time of the year where there's just not, you know, a lot going on. So it's really kind of neat to think that I could have this tree filled with lots of beautiful yellow lemons. Now these can get about six to 10 feet tall. However, if you plant them in a container, it will contain their root system and definitely keep them smaller. You can also prune them to size, which works well. I have this in a tree form, but you can also grow this in more of like a bush shrubbery form. These are hardy in zones eight to 11. So if you're in a colder zone, most likely you're going to have to put it in a greenhouse or bring it inside. You really want to start, you know, it's hardy to about 20 degrees, but but I would say if it starts getting below 30, then maybe go ahead and bring it inside um, during those chilly temps, just so you don't lose it. Remember that when we're planting in a container, you need to plan for it being colder, a couple of zones colder. So even though this is zone eight, I would plan on it since it's in the container, I would kind of assume that it's gonna be at the cold point of zone six, which definitely means I need to bring it in. Now, if I were to plant it in the ground, that would be a different situation. I could still plan at zone eight, but because it's in a container, we will assume that it's gonna be at a colder, um, that it will get colder in the container. It needs about eight to 12 hours of sunlight every day. So optimal in the Southern areas. Um, I'm really kind of excited. It loves humidity and we got, we got that in <laughs> droves here in the North Texas area. So it would be really, it'll be really nice. Hopefully it'll be very happy. If you're growing this inside, you definitely want to mist it on a daily basis because it does love and thrive with humidity. Now these can grow to, they can live to be about 50 years old, which is pretty cool. Um, it's like an heirloom plant, which is really, really neat. It does prefer moist soil, but not wet soil. So it doesn't like any kind of standing water. You definitely wanna make sure that it drains really well. Okay, before we get too far, I am gonna go ahead and self hand pollinate this. The reason I'm doing that is I've had this guy inside, so it has not had access to any pollinators outside. And these flowers are getting older and some of them are starting to drop. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can go ahead and help it fruit this year. Now, most of these um, Meyer lemon trees, they can fruit in the first two years. I don't think this is an overly old, I don't think it's a super old tree or anything. So it might be a year or two. It might not be capable of bearing fruit this first year, but I want to go ahead and give it a try with the hand pollination. And the reason I'm going to do that now before I pot it up is I'm going to be knocking this tree around quite a bit when I'm potting it up and I don't want all of the pollen and flowers to fall. So I'm going to bring you in and I'm going to show you how easy it is to hand pollinate this. Okay. So I'm going to start with this little cluster right here. I've just got a nice, clean, soft paintbrush. You can also use a cotton swab. 
Okay, so the female part is kind of the stronger, more erect part. And then on the edges are all of the pollen areas. So you just wanna brush your brush over the pollen areas, all the loose pollen around the sides, and then make sure you rub it on the central female portion of the bloom. It's as simple as that. And I am gonna drop some petals as we're doing this, but that's okay. Yeah, I figured that a lot of these were kind of shot already, but that's okay. We'll go in and I've still got a bunch of new blooms coming. This does take a little bit of time, but I've definitely got like, if you can see how yellow my brush is from all the pollen. Therapeutic. I do have a whole lot more blooms on here that have it opened up. So it'll be good when I get this outside. I have that opportunity um, for another round of blooms that can be pollinated by the outdoor pollinators. Look at the pollen on the brush. Super cool. Okay, easy as that. Going through and hand pollinating it, just help it along. Like I said, there's a whole nother round of brand new buds on here. And basically, as um, when I pulled this outside, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a pollinator magnet because currently in my house right now, my whole house smells amazing. It smells like lemons. These blooms smell absolutely amazing. And so I'm pretty sure outside it's going to be a huge draw for pollinators. Okay, so now we're going to pot it up. Now I want to put it in a pot that's one to two sizes larger than the actual container. And if you guys remember those blue and white mosaic tile pots that I purchased from that big warehouse sale, that's what I'm going to use. So let me grab one of those. Okay, this pot is perhaps a little big, but not too far off. It's about the two, two sizes larger moment here, but I think this will work out really, really well because I do plan on doing some underplanting on this, which I think will be really nice. And we'll talk about that as we go on. You definitely, your pot needs to have really good drainage because Meyer lemons or citrus in general do not like their roots to just be stagnant and wet. So you wanna make sure you have a really good drainage. This has a drainage hole at the bottom. Okay, so you can put rocks at the bottom of this, a couple of inches of rocks to aid with drainage. You can put a piece of screen down here. I don't typically do any of that with any of my containers, so I'm not gonna do it with this one. I am gonna be utilizing my favorite soil, the Burger BM7 soil. You want a soil that's like really loamy and light and airy. Um, a cactus soil, cactus succulent soil, would be excellent for citrus as well. I just wasn't willing to go buy it. I, I like my own soil, so I'm gonna start with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fill the bottom of this pot up with the soil, and then from there, we're going to check out the roots of the tree. Okay, I've got it about halfway filled up with soil. So let's talk fertilizer. Okay, so you can definitely purchase a specific citrus um, fertilizer, Citrus Tone, um, I think like Dr. Earth has one. There's lots of different varieties that are specific to citrus. I only have one citrus plant. I really don't want to go buy a $20 bag of fertilizer for one plant um, at this point in time. So I did a little research and turns out plant tone works in a pinch which works out really well so if you don't want to go buy fertilizer for one specific plant i did research plant tone has a lot of what the citrus plant needs and so it will definitely work as well so i'm gonna go ahead and add some of this to the soil and then i am going to mix that into this layer of soil here all right so next let's check out our roots so pull this out. Oh, 
Go watch out for that fan up there. I took a bunch of my blooms off. Oops. <laughs> okay, so taking a look at my roots, I'm looking to see if I have any roots that are dry, um, that maybe look like they're not rotted or like they've got issues. I don't really see any. And then I'm also kind of looking to see if I've got roots that are starting to circle. And I really don't. This is actually in really, really good shape. So I'm real happy about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just settle this down into the pot, aiming for the center. And now we're going to backfill with additional soil. When I backfill with additional soil, I want to stop the soil at about one inch below the crown of the plant. And the reason we want to do that is because citrus doesn't really like to have very wet um, soil and it doesn't like wet roots. And so having it sit up a little bit higher helps with its drainage and keeping it from getting too moist. I am compressing the soil a little bit, not a lot, just enough to kind of firm it up so it holds the plant in place. Now, once I've got this in, the best thing you can do for watering is to water it slowly. Lemons don't like to be overwatered. They don't want a little bit of water every day. They want a nice, deep soaking, and then they want to be left alone. And they want to be left alone until the top two inches of the soil are dry. Um, they don't like to be left in any kind of standing water. So potentially having something like a plate underneath, like a water catch plate underneath is not what you really want for um, something like a citrus or this Meyer lemon. Now we added the fertilizer, the plant tone, and these do like to be fertilized monthly from April to September. And typically September is when you're getting close to like all it's fruited out and then you're within a couple of months of harvesting all the fruit at that point in time. You can continue to um, fertilize with like the plant tone, like a slow release fertilizer. You can also use like a water emulsion, a fertilizer emulsion, like the Alaskan fish food would be good, something along those lines. But you definitely want to make sure that you are fertilizing throughout the season if you want to get large lush lemons. Now pruning is important for citrus plants as well. A couple of different things. We want to keep their airflow open um, in these trees. And the, one of the reasons I selected this particular tree is because it has three main branches and the whole center part is open, which is really, really fun. Over time, um, pruning as needed, you want to prune any branches that cut back into the plant. So like this guy right here, you see him? He's kind of coming back into the center of the plant. I'll watch him and maybe this year after he produces um, some lemons, I'll cut that particular portion out and allow more airflow. It's so small right now, it's not really going to cause any issues. You also want to um, cut out what's called long leads, which are going to be branches that are going to go straight up and they're not going to bear any kind of fruit. So what you want to do is just trim those out whenever you see it. If you see any that aren't producing any fruit, that's something to let go. And when I say aren't producing any fruit, they're not going to have any blooms on them at all. Those are just um, basically leads that are gathering more energy for the plant, but we really don't need to waste the time on that and you can just trim those out. So one of the things I read about about Meyer lemons is that if you under plant them with things like herbs and flowers it actually really helps them um, the flowers become pollinated and it helps you produce more lemons so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab some of my petunias that I grew from seed and we're going to go ahead and tuck some of them around the base of this okay I pulled a few out the first one is a lilac ice and the um Petunias that I started this year get pretty big. So I'm hoping that these will kind of grow over and flow over the edge, I think would be absolutely amazing. Now I'm gonna be sure, I'm gonna really aim towards the edge of the pot because I don't really wanna disturb the roots of the citrus. It doesn't really like for its roots to be messed around with. But you can see the trailing habit would be really fun on these blooms. I'm also gonna plant a Triumph mix this particular one hasn't started blooming yet, but it will soon. All my petunias are now out in the greenhouse officially, and they are as happy as can be out in the beautiful weather and sun that we're having. 
you could plant some cilantro and parsley would be very very cool um, here as well this is another this is an opera supreme lilac ice so i'll have two of those in one triumph but look at the trailing tendencies of that All right, I'm not gonna put any kind of mulch um, on here because we do wanna allow this soil and we don't want it to retain too much water. I will have to pay attention. I'll probably have to spot water some of the petunias, but that's not a problem. And truthfully, these petunias will fizzle out in into June, into July. It'll just be too hot in my area for them. And so I might come back here and back plant with something like purslane, which kind of has succulent tendencies and would probably do really well with some drier conditions. Okay, so I am gonna be putting this outside of my porch. I'll show you guys what that looks like in just a few minutes. And I am gonna put it, be putting it on a roller so that I can move it around. I'm gonna start it on my back porch in the shade. It will get some sun during the day, but because I've had it inside for quite a while, I really wanna kind of basically harden it off again, going back outside. I don't wanna give it too much sun too quickly because then there's, I could scorch the leaves, all the um, leaves could fall off. I could have lots of issues with that. So I really kind of wanna ease it into being outside. Side. Now I will definitely keep y'all updated with the progress of this. Most likely you'll see it in my garden tours that I do each month and I'm actually about to do a February garden tour so I'm really excited about that and um, so you'll be able to see how it's doing. I would love for those of you who ended up going purchasing a citrus to let me know how yours is going. If you have any suggestions or tips for growing citrus, I'm, I'm really excited. I did want to point out that there's a metal stake in here and I am keeping the metal stake in place. This is a very thin um, trunk right here and we do get some high winds in my area so I think it's best to keep it in there as long as possible to make sure it is nice and secure. Now of course one of the best things about citrus is when you get to harvest them and these will be harvested in the winter and typically you're going to harvest a Meyer lemon when the lemon color is kind of the color of an egg yolk. Um, that's the time when it's ripe and ready to go and that'll be really exciting and if I am able to harvest lemons it'll be really fun doing some recipes but I also might look into um, freezing the juice um, which would be really cool I heard that you can just put the juice in um, like an ice tray ice cube tray and freeze it in cubes and then have it for future recipes okay let's get this moved outside okay I've got one of these little rolly things here for now which I think will work really really good so I'm just going to position it right here. This area does get part shade during the day, which I think will help ease it in. So let me grab the plant. Now, because I have it on this rolly cart thing, I don't need to put any um, pot feet underneath it. If you were going to put this directly on the ground, you would want to make sure you put something under the pot to lift it up so that water could drain out really well. I am going to go ahead and start go ahead and add a drip to it and currently set up to every three days but it will get drip to the base of its roots for about 20 minutes every three days but let's go ahead and water it in by hand to start off with so i'm just going to allow the water to dribble in right now and I am going to pay attention to make sure that I see water coming out the base which is really important okay feel pretty good about it I'm excited this is my first venture into citrus um, I love I like citrus to eat anyway but I love the idea of having my own citrus but then also there's something just really whimsical about having citrus trees in your garden oh my gosh it smells so good um, I love it I love the idea that it would be right here by my back door so every time I open the door I should be able to get a whiff of the scent which is absolutely wonderful I don't feel like the leaves smell that much. I wonder if I cracked them and crumpled them, if they would have a scent to them, but the blooms are absolutely amazing. But I'm really looking forward to this, trying it out, see how it goes. If it goes well, maybe next year I'll pick up a line. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> 
I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll like the Meyer lemon so much I want to, you know, so we'll see how it goes. It might not even fruit this year. Typically it takes a couple of years before it fruits. So it might not even fruit this year, but that would be okay too. It's still beautiful and fun to enjoy. And I think it's just going to be a really fun addition to the garden. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed talking about how to pot up a Meyer, an improved Meyer lemon. Talked a little bit about the history of the improved Meyer lemon, some of the stats about about it, how to fertilize, how to prune. And when the time comes for pruning, I will come back with you guys and um, show you how I go about pruning this as well. And then we talked a little bit about harvesting. We are still a long way away from <laughs> like a year, like months, months, but that'll be a fun project as well when the time comes to harvest these Meyer lemons. All right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it helps grow the channel. If you have any advice regarding citrus trees, please please let me know. I would really appreciate it. And make sure you check me out on my social media outlets, including TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.